The autumn is coming in northern hemisphere. The people is about leaving from beach in my country. So for the people who couldn't have a fun on the beach this year, like me, I share this tutorial making water surface effect. Let's have a fun. Alright, to achieve the wave shape, we use this something called water noise. Worley noise is a noise function developed in 1996 by Stephen Worley. This noise algorithm generates different looks from parry noise, and it's useful to simulate some patterns in nature like biological cells or dried up ground on the desert. And I found that also resembles the pattern appear on the sea surface. So let's get into it. Just be careful I set the angle mode to degrees in the setup. So first thing we're gonna do is access all the pixel values in the canvas and manipulate them to achieve the effect. So in the draw function, I call this load pixels and update pixels. The load pixels allows us to access all the pixels on the canvas, and these update pixels reflect the changes we add between the two functions. And I put a nested loop between the two to access all the pixels in the canvas. Inside of the nested loop, I assign some value in this array pixels. This array pixels is a pre-prepared array of the p5.js and it stores all the color information, the RGB and alpha values of all the pixels on the canvas. The array pixel is one dimensional array, like this, and it contains RGBA values in order in every four indices. For example, the very first four values are RGBA for this particular pixels at top left, and the next four are for this second pixel, and goes on, goes on, left to right, top to bottom. So we need to think about how to access each color channel at each pixel by this nested loop. So uh, first we think at pixel level. So let's say we have a canvas with 5 pixels of width and height. And I put an index for each pixel here. So the index increases horizontally by 1, but vertically by 5, which is the length of width, right? So, for instance, this pixel index is 17. But why is it 17? That's because it's added 5 to this 2. 1, 2, 3 times, right? 3 times. 3, which is this y value. So, we can formulate the index of this pixel like this. Or, let's say, like, index equal x plus y times width. So let's check this formula by this pixel with um, index of 23. The xy coordinates are 3 and 4. So according to the formula, we add 3, which is y value, uh, no, uh, I mean x value, plus y times width. The answer is 23, and that's correct. But like I said, the array pixel contains RGBA value in order for each pixel, so we need to multiply this index by 4. And in order to access the RGBA of all each pixel, we need to write individually like this. Alright, so let's change the canvas to some bluish color. So I set the red to 44, green to 169, the blue to 225. The last one is the alpha, so I set it like to 55, which is 100%. Alright, now we know how to change the pixel as we like. Next thing we're gonna do is plotting dozens of points on random location in the canvas. These are gonna be the center points of each cellular shape, just like this. So in p5.js, I make an array points. Then I store 12 vectors with random location in the array. In the draw function, let's draw points on the vectors. Hmm, that's good, randomly plotted. Now let's achieve the wave pattern using the points. Inside of the nested loop, calculate the distance from every single pixel to all the vectors we store in the array points. And I want an another array to store all the distance. Okay, after calculate all the distance between every pixel and the feature points, 
I sort the array with this sort function. Then I take the smallest value in the array, which is the first one in the sorted array, and assign to this variable noise. So now I change the colors by this noise value, and let's see what happens. Hmm, right. We just got the basics of the water surface effect. If you are working on MacBook or iMac with Retina displays, you probably seeing this result that completely <laughs> messed up. And that's because some displays like Retina uh, scales pixels differently. And all you need to do is include this one line of code in the setup function. Hmm, good. Now let's change it to bluish color to look like this C surface. So, now we are directly assigned the noise value to this RGB here. But now I'm going to modify the noise value before the assigning. So, at first, we choose the both ends of gradual color shift. For now, I make it gradient from this light blue, which is 44, 169, and 225 for the RGB, to the white color, which is 3 of 225. No, 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 I mean 255. So I simulated a formula on this graph calculator site, Desmos. The x-axis is the noise value, which is the distance from a certain feature point. And y-axis is the mapped RGB values. So for now, let's put three horizontal linear graphs that represent this light blue. So y equal 44, y equal 225 for the blue, y equal 169 for green. Alright, now the RGB values are always a light blue, regardless the distance from the feature point. So I put an exponential term to make the three graphs converge to this certain point, this. The y value of the point is going to be 255 because I want to make the gradient color towards the white. And the x value is actually arbitrary because depending on the canvas size and how many feature points in the canvas, the range of the noise value uh, I mean, the distance from a certain feature point is completely different, at least in this my method. So let's do try and error to find a sweet spot. So for now, let's converge these three graphs to this point, 255, 255. The x value is totally arbitrary, I thought it's somewhat reasonable as a starting point. <laughs> so I add an exponential term in each formula. So let's um, x to the power of 2, ah, that's too much, I make the exponential rate lower, like, okay, that looks good, so I do the same for the others. Hmm, alright, that looks good. So let's implement this in the p5.js. So first I make a function wave color, and I give x and 3 as arguments here. I use this a for the division, which is this 17.55, and b for the addition, which is 44, and the e for the uh, exponent 2. Then I assign the function with the values in these three formulas here. X is going to be noise, A is going to be 17.55, V is this 44, E is the 2. Alright, let's refresh the page. Oh, we just got this nice gradient color. But we barely can see the edge of the wave shapes. Uh, it's too subtle, right? This is because that these graphs, the exponential rate, uh, happen to be too small. So, in p5.js, if I quarter the number of the feature point, like 3, yeah, now we see more definition here, right? Since now we have only 3 feature points, so each point is more separated. Therefore, now we have enough of pixels reached to the conversion point to see the wave clearly. But in the final result, I plotted 36 feature points. So the points get much more closer. So in that case, what we need to do is shift this convergence point on the x-axis negatively. 
So what about 124? I almost have the x value. This time, let's also change the exponents along with the division. Alright, I think it's good, so let's modify the code according to these graphs. Oh, I need to change this to 36. Hmm, this is great. Looks very similar to the final result. Hmm, actually I wanna change the graph a bit. Yeah, depends on the subtle differences of the coverage of the graphs, the result looks a bit different. So, I want you to play with the parameters yourself once. By the way, the frame rate is too low, it takes several seconds to refresh the page. Because in draw function, it iterates through all the pixels and also calculates the distances between all the pixels and every feature point, <laughs> which is kinda insane. So, one thing we can do quickly is replace this pfabjs distance function with basic operation syntax of the JavaScript, which is uh, the addition or the multiplication, like, yeah, like that, and plain JavaScript function. I use basic Pythagorean theorem to calculate the distances, which you learned at junior high school, I guess. And instead of taking square root for all the distance, let's take only for the shortest one the shortest distance, which is the index 0 in the sorted array. I think that works identical. So let's refresh the page. Alright, that still works fine. Alright, next, let's make this night version. That's very cool. I like this looking. So, for the night version, I make a gradient from this dark greenish color to this light blue we just used in the previous one. So let's work on the graph. First, I copy the three formulas for the night version. Then, I plot a vertical line, x equal to 124, here. So, now I'm gonna set the RGB values to the dark green color at this x equal 0, and make the RGB values to the light blue at this x equal to 124. Alright, looks good. So let's modify the code in the pfabjs. Alright, that's it. Awesome. You can even make the other liquid substances in this real world using the different color schemes. I want you to try it out. So now we just made a steel image of the water surface. To achieve the animation loop, we need to find a way to nicely move the feature points. And the computation is absolutely killing the frame rate, so we need to tackle this program. When I upload a part 2, I will put the video at the top right here.